All right, welcome back, everyone. It's David, aka Fairmere4731, and let's talk economics. In the last video, we talked about taxes. Let's go ahead and continue this discussion. We're going to discuss how you can have a stable economy and what exactly is all this economy mess in the first place. So there's a couple of key spots you're going to have to become familiar with. First is the government. So in here you're going to see national summary. And this tells you basically your tax. So blah blah blah. You can read all that. Um, you can't you can't be absolutely dumb. You got to see this and know what it is. Next is policies, and you can see here Britain starts off in the yellow, and with ministers. And ministers do have a great effect on how your economy plays forward. So in here we can look at our treasury. He's got all these stars. How is that possible? Um, his managing skill is very high and he's got um, also a plus to uh, treasury management with uh, something of a banker. A capitalist means he also has two plus happiness to the middle class and uh, two plus for treasury administration. And he's also uh, incorporable or whatever the heck that is uh, so he's negative one to uh, management negative two to happiness so those kinda cross each other out but he's also got another plus three for treasury management so we take the good with the bad and John Smith is uh, more good than he is bad but this dude here he's got plus one for treasury management and he's got plus two for treasury management negative one for justice plus one to happiness and you can see if you move these guys over um, okay, so let's see, plus three for bonus of global, plus six for um, uh, growth and uh, trade route income, and plus six for town wealth. Okay, so let's roll them back again. Okay, so we got plus ten, plus ten, and plus five. So um, definitely uh, John Smith is a better fit for us there. Okay, you can see this gentleman has... Uh, uh, George Clark, he has a uh, strategist, so he definitely is going to be a, a good fit for your military. And this uh, this dude here, he's got um, this emblem, which is going to be uh, good for your um, your naval administration, because he's got plus three from Navy. Okay, so uh, you need to just become familiar with this and see who is the worst of the worst, and start kicking the worst of them out see if you can get somebody uh, better in so we know if we move this guy around if John Smith dies or croaks or something happens to him we can roll him in there and he's not terrible so let's go ahead and get rid of this bozo here um, and with this monarchy um, constitutional monarchy you can only kick you can't bring them up and switch them like you can in uh, uh, some of the other um, uh, uh, government types now with a uh, um, constitutional monarchy and with uh, um, your uh, uh, what do you call it um, like America geez I'm losing my mind but anyways uh, if uh, United Province America they are um, constitutional so um, they that's why they are uh, you have to vote them in or kick them out so same thing with them we're gonna have to kick them um, now he isn't he's the damn same person almost but so each turn we got to kick this fool out and uh, hopefully we get somebody in the next couple turns to be better than him and the importance of uh, America let me cover that so um, your colonies uh, you know each get an uh, administrator from your cabinet so um, these are gonna provide benefits to you from uh, over here when you go into policies and you switch to America uh, the better you have the quicker he can keep into control if he has uh, things that are good for uh, p happiness then it will improve your happiness in that region so anyway um, that kinda covers that and you can see here uh, where your um, taxes and your income is coming from in each region and uh, so America is not making a whole lot um, so you can see here uh, your trade and uh, I'll cover another video for trade but this is just going to be the basics um, so uh, trade is going to be important for you for your economy especially as somebody like England who um, you have a lot of 
naval trade routes so you're going to need a strong navy to be able to protect those trade routes versus your enemies or pri uh, pirates so um, so what can you do to um, work on your economy so there's several things so number one you can see you get huge bonuses off of your government uh, you know your actual government buildings like great parliament and if you go to the building browser here you can see in your capital region you got the most uh, buildings okay so obviously um, you know you don't have to be in you know you can obviously read and see what they are but of course you get um, unique buildings at your capital and you're gonna get you know all these bonuses to your region so the quicker you can build this up the better it is for your economy um, but you also have to do it in strides you have to choose which one you're doing at what time because opera houses uh, right here are also equally as important so if we go to the building browser you can see you can get a unique building here with a British Museum and it's going to help your economy as well so if you um, you know you get one per turn right now but uh, on bonus but this gives you another plus two um, and then if you choose this route with the Grand Opera House you get plus three versus going with uh, the observatory you're going to end up getting a plus eight so it's a bigger bonus there and you get um, enhanced happiness and everything and you get to uh, the biggest thing is you get the technology rate boost okay so um, typically what I'll do is I'll go with your observatory because um, it is going to give you a greater um, a benefit at the early part of the game and then later on once I have gotten most of my research done I'll destroy this building and then um, build up this uh, to the British Museum because uh, you're going to get more from this in the long term and that's in my opinion okay so then also in your home region you're going to see on Britain you have iron mines so each of these unique buildings like uh, of course like mines you're going to get wealth from this uh, particular type of uh, mineral and the peasant farms are going to be one of your more important uh, sub buildings to build uh, because they're going to increase your population as you can see 0.4 increase to population growth and uh, that might not seem like a lot but it is it actually really is um, so then plus uh, 350 in region wealth um, so you can see how you're gaining wealth uh, from these buildings and uh, so you know you can obviously you can go through each one and see what they each but you get the crafts workshops and everything like that so you're gonna get benefits from each one now the the key in economy is understanding when you look at this uh, menu that um, your summary is going to show you tax income now when you look at your uh, region of England you're gonna see right here 6775 wow I'm getting a lot of money there why isn't it going into my tax income of 60 uh, 46 20 so you're gonna see that this is just wealth this is not actual income your income is right here and it's 2670 so your tax rate is what you're getting so basically your people think about it in this way your people are making 6775 off the economy and your tax rate is 39.4 so you're making 2670 off of that percentage from the 67 uh, 6075 so the more that uh, things that your people are producing the higher the wealth becomes and that's how you uh, you get your income so your tax rate um, again is going to be under policies and you can switch that and you can see how that affects your uh, income so the higher you go the more pissed your people get but the more money you're making but there is a consequence to that so here you can see it's uh, you know pretty middle of the ground and uh, I went over in the last video how reducing it is going to reduce the money you make but in the long term it has other benefits that pay off um, of course you don't want to go too far uh, but you can see the definite benefits it does provide uh, from reducing it down so taking less now is that Walmart approach um, you sell it uh, cheaper but you're selling to more people 
so you're making more money in the long run and that's kind of what the philosophy is behind uh, reducing your tax rate on your middle class um, then the other big thing with economy uh, to boost your economy is going to be from your navy okay so all these trade routes here if you slap your ships on it with trade ships you can raid the economy uh, from the uh, uh, raid the uh, shipping and you can take trade goods so that's why it's important to have um, your trade ships like your Indian men's and put them on the uh, trade routes to raid the shipping not just your regular ships and uh, over here the pirate regions are going to be a big provider of wealth for you as well so for example if um, we take the ship here, um, you know, just to give you an example, and I'll probably lose it when I auto resolve. But um, if you auto resolve, we you can see that we have away. captured a ship, and it's going to give us $431. Um, if we fought the battle, we could have took all three, and we might have gotten over a thousand. So, you you know, that's money in the bank. So it's it's very important to become familiar with naval battles and how to capture ships and if you want I can cover that in another video just let me know in the description I mean in the uh, comments and I'll, I'll make a video on that but uh, that's why it's important to uh, fight your naval battles capture the ships make some money and that's why I never usually uh, destroy the pirates um, because they held the Le Leeward Islands and uh, San Jose um, and you know you you get those uh, and they're gonna also raid the shipping off of the uh, trade routes and keep them uh, free for you to be able to put your ships there so you just have to come with a fleet that has uh, ships that can protect you from pirates coming to take yours but leaving the pirates in the game they can clear off uh, people that are not your enemy off the trade routes to help you uh, get your ships on there so that's why it's important not to kick the pirates out uh, when I first started the game that's what I did a lot is I would uh, defeat the pirates as quickly as possible so I didn't have to deal with them but the pirates have galleons and the galleons are worth a fortune uh, when you capture them so anyways um, obviously um, capturing India is going to vastly improve your economy because there is a lot of resources there that are going to um, give you a lot of wealth and you have access to a um, to the uh, um, east uh, the uh, I'm sorry the uh, East Indies and um, that is why it's important to um, you know establish yourself uh, in the Indies uh, so you can start getting some of this like the spices um, now you do get some spices from the Americas, but um, that's why it's important. Now America, America is um, okay, but there's just not much um, progression in the American region. So you have to spend a lot of time uh, waiting in the game. Er early game, it's not worth that much money uh, because there's just not much built. So you can see here in in the Carolinas, there's no ports. Georgia, no ports. Just the home region and a real small uh, plantation. Florida has only got uh, a few uh, where they actually expand to get quite a bit. Late game, same with Louisiana. And you can see over here, Pennsylvania, one of the richer regions, doesn't have a whole lot right now at this point in the game. Same with uh, New England, it's another rich region. And uh, New York will become as the later part of the game. Um, and same with uh, Quebec so all these regions over here will become more wealthy as later in the game uh, gets but right now another one Mexico but early game America is pretty uh, deficient for uh, your economy I mean there are some key points such as the um, uh, the Dutch Ganya and the French Ganya um, you, they do provide you with some good income and most importantly uh, trade access uh, to your um, trade ships ports that you can hit and get uh, ships right to a uh, trade port very quickly 
um, also the windward islands one turn one uh, one turn and you can get your ships um, off to the ports I mean off to the uh, trade routes so th that's why these regions right here are very uh, very important uh, regions for you to have some type of control over so you can get your shipping going and if you have uh, fifth rates protecting your fleets you can bring them back and then once they get here it's just one turn to come over and uh, repair them and then head them back to the uh, trade routes to protect your shipping so uh, important uh, spots to control uh, same with uh, for trade routes um, same with these uh, areas here so these are just some ways that you can uh, make sure your economy is staying strong and if you happen to be uh, a nation that is landlocked such as Poland Lithuania um, you're gonna have a much different um, way of needing to uh, grow your economy uh, such as the fact that um, it's gonna be quite a while before you can get to a port so you're gonna need to either do a couple of things come down to the Crimea and take uh, um, Crimea from uh, the um, uh, Crimea cartain uh, 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 pirate dudes, the ones that are uh, allied with Ottomans, but that's going to put you at war with the Ottoman Empire, uh, which is okay. But um, or you can uh, make your way up here and take Ingria, but that's going to anger Russia against you. Um, so those are the ports that are going to be the easiest for you to take and then uh, later in the game you'll get ports along here um, but that's later in the game and it does take some effort if you choose to just stay landlocked without a navy uh, you're going to want to take a, a shorter time on uh, going into war you're going to want to um, make sure all your buildings are established and all your roads are built um, because all your trade is going to be going over road so all of your connecting regions that you uh, neighbor um, all the uh, people that are there it's going to be important to uh, establish trade routes with um, so that you can uh, gain your economy there otherwise uh, the system I talked about before about uh, reducing your tax rate is going to become even more crucial for you in this uh, because you're going to need that long-term economy uh, versus the short-term uh, quick money of uh, the other campaigns. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of economic basics. Um, trying to think of anything else. Okay, I'm just going to cover a little bit on trade. Um, so it's important for you to notice that when you're putting um, ships on trade routes in the um, let me just go over here to the um, uh, coast of Brazil or any of the other uh, uh, trade theaters um, you're going to uh, put ships on here the more ships you put on here the more it's going to reduce the rates uh, that you're getting these products because you're um, you know it's basically supply and demand so uh, the more products you're taking uh, the demands going to go down because you have more product available so um, that is going to cause an effect so sometimes it's not even a bad idea to just put one ship on each one it, you cost less than uh, uh, upkeep of other ships and um, yeah so there's that whole thing but um, okay so to summarize the main keys to have an important economy if you're a uh, nation that has uh, access to ports uh, building a navy that can protect your sea routes and or trade uh, um, in the trade theaters um, it's important to establish that navy and get yourself uh, in a position where you're going to be able to fight naval battles and take ships to gain money. Um, next is to build your um, your capital um, with all of its um, main buildings that are going to 
uh, improve your economy through um, your research and because research is another way that you can improve your economy so let's talk about research that's the third point so research um, you have uh, philosophy it's going to um, improve your economy and um, your wealth because of the knowledge you get and how you're doing things um, and then you also have industrial technology which you get um, agricultural which is going to improve your um, population uh, growth so uh, this is your agricultural tree so you'll need to do that to improve your economy the metal industry as well and the textile industry so these uh, th uh, three uh, different um, trees are going to um, be able to help your economy in the long run as well okay and then next we talked about landlocked nations so to Im have a strong economy for a landlocked nation you're going to want to make sure your tax rates are uh, at the right levels so your um, population is growing your population growth is the most important thing uh, that you can have for landlocked nations um, for long-term growth so anyways um, hope this helps a little bit and I'm probably missing quite a bit of things because this game is pretty complex with the money system so hope you like and subscribe I'll have some more campaign tutorials coming shortly thanks again everyone